Hello friends, how are you doing today? So in this video, we are going to talk about generative AI. So now in this world, everywhere generative AI, right? Every technology company is focusing on creating generative AI. So basically, generative AI is uh, part of artificial intelligence um, where the generative AI models will help you to solve the day-to-day -day problems, right? So in this video, we're going to see about um, in a technology company, who are all the roles involved in creating this uh, generative AI? And what are all the languages they use to create this generative AI? And what exactly the model is and how the model is going to help the organizations um, in achieving their goals, okay? So when you take an example of robo, what happens, uh, you might have seen the robos helping the people in the restaurant to serve the food and some robos uh, play soccer and some robos play ping pong. So these are all the examples of robos uh, which are using the artificial intelligence to perform a particular task, right? So similarly, when it comes to the generative AI, it is not going to be one size fits all. You may have different uh, use cases and this particular generative AI is going to solve the use case for your industry in different ways, okay? So I have come up with a chart and uh, that chart will explain in a technology company what exactly happening for generating this uh, generative AI models and how it is getting used in the real time scenarios. Okay, I have uh, put down a couple of uh, columns here that talks about uh, the roles being performed in technology company in creating this generative AI. So normally, if you take a technology company, there you can see the domain experts, data scientists, data engineers, who are all uh, having that uh, capability to create the models. So basically, the model is kind of a robo where you feed in the data and it will learn the data and react accordingly. So what are all the languages being used to create these models? Python is a key language being used for creating these models. And TensorFlow and Keras, OpenCV, these are all the languages being used, commonly used to create these models. So once after creating the model, these models are trained with set of data. And uh, once after the data is uh, fine-tuned fine and given uh, to this model to learn, and this model will uh, learn those data and produce effective output for you to solve a particular business problem. And if you look at this generative AI, there were a lot of models already been developed. And these models are specific to the technology company. They are focusing on developing these type of models. and. Uh, when it comes to using this particular generative AI for your business use case, you can have this pre-trained model in your organization and uh, use it for solving a particular problem. So when it comes to generative AI, you must uh, understand one thing. Uh, one set of people who are technologists who create this uh, type of um, models and train the model and it will be available as a pre-trained model for your organization to use and avail the benefit. And second group is focusing on using the model. And you don't need to have a core technical skill to use this generative AI model. You don't need to have this language skill, scripting skill to create um, the generative AI model. All you need to know is how to use that model. So if you get this pre-trained model, you can put it into your organization and then feed in your particular data and uh, get to know about the output and you can uh, get to know about a critical problem to solve, okay? So in this chart, I just uh, mentioned the roles and the languages and then how these technology companies are creating these models and, uh, and it is going to solve the particular business problem. So normally, if you take a generative A, which is branch of artificial intelligence, in this uh, particular um, case, there are... Uh, four uh, well-established model available for you to use. So basically this foundation model has the ability to uh, learn more data and high quality, it will produce high quality output. And uh, since this has this um, high quality output capability and it has the suitability to a different organization, this particular model in generative AI can be used for market analysis. For example, if you are a finance organization, you want to have uh, customer details and customer analysis and uh, what type of finance product is suitable for a particular customer. So for those uh, particular type of use cases, this foundational model will be so useful. And when it comes to medical uh, procedures, surgical inf information, uh, all those things, uh, the 
foundational model in generative AI will be very much useful. Next one is um, GAN or Generative Adversarial Network Model. So basically, this model has uh, two sub-models in it. One is that um, uh, generator and another is a discriminator. So basically, the generator model, sub-model in this uh, model learns the data, whatever you give as input. And then discriminator is the sub-model that will produce the output and distinguish the output from the input. So these type of uh, models are very much useful for video creation, image uh, creation. Uh, for example, if you input multiple images, it will produce an unique and uh, optimized uh, images. And uh, the third model here is the transformer model. So basically, this transformer model has the ability to learn a lot of data from um, you as an input provider. And uh, it will create an optimized output. For example, if you want to create a website and you want to know the code, pages, all those uh, information you may need, right? So if you give the input details, like I want to create a home page uh, with some login screen, and once after that, I want to show the products in the page. So these are all the information that you are going to give to this model. And this model will generate an output of exact web page that you are expecting. Best example is virtual assistant. Uh, you can integrate with your um, website. If you are a shopping cart application, if you are e-commerce application, you can integrate this type of model to get an optimized output. Chatbot, virtual assistant, and in case of um, producing an actual um, uh, output with the information, whatever you provided, right? So for that, this particular model in generative AI is very much useful. And uh, one another information that you must know here is um, the generative pre-trained models or GPT. That is uh, part of this transformer model. So that is uh, producing a lot of uh, output when you give some input uh, with the descriptions, right? And the fourth model is uh, variational auto encoders. Basically, the variational auto encoder model is having the two major categories inside it. One is the encoders and decoders. So basically, it uh, it is very much useful for the security related use cases. And in case if you want to uh, produce a, a unique music output, and in case if you want to do an anomaly detection for all those use cases, this variational auto encoders model in generative AI is so helpful. So uh, to summarize, if you are a technology company, these are all the roles uh, doing the work of creating this generative AI models by using these languages. And these models are pre-trained and available for you to use if you are an organization who you want to consume only the models, not creating the models. And uh, this is how uh, the generative AI is being developed and being used. And uh, I don't think any of the enterprise uh, ready generative AI is available until now. So, so many technology companies are uh, working on to do that. So, getting to know about this will be very important as an architect or if you are a user of generative AI or user of any artificial intelligence tools and technology, this will be definitely be useful. Uh, hope you like this video. If you like this video, give a thumbs up and share it to your friends. Take care. Bye.